Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. This is Scott, welcome back to Drawing Together. Got a lot of people joining in. Um, I've gotta get things set up a little bit differently. So I've got the chat off to my left over here. Um, a reference image in front of me. Um, I wanna call out and I thoroughly appreciate all of the puns that I am seeing come. It started off with jams. Uh, and then uh, Pranya, I, I love that, it's fantastic. So thank you, welcome everybody. Um, as you um, seem to have gathered, today's subject is this, this is my eye. Um, I'll be working on this. You know, it's a subject, I mean, I, there, there are, I think there are a few subjects in the art world that have been uh, utilized more than, than an eye. You see this a, a ton, of, I mean, there's, there's so many people that have drawn an eye and it's really, um, it's really kind of a, a powerful image. Uh, and so this is my eye, I just took a photo of it, kind of zoomed in. Um, I tried to set up some light where I have some strong contrast between light and shadow. And so if you're following along, if you have a mirror set up, I think it's really helpful to work from your own eye from life or take a photo and, and work from that as well. Um, I've got the reference image in the description. So if you wanna print that up or bring that up, you can follow along as well. Um, the the thing that we're really going to address here is understanding the the real structure of the eye. Uh, when I've taught beginning drawing, um, you know, for for years, one of the things we talk a lot about are symbol systems. So the idea that we have a preconceived notion about what an object looks like or how it should be drawn. So if I were to, you know, for example, you know, one of the first things we draw is a smiley face, right? That's a symbol for a face and we can look at that and recognize it as such. Um, you know, and an eye is often a very powerful one and as well where we can tend to, we can draw a symbol like this and we can recognize it as an eye. Um, but that's not really what an eye looks like. And so the, the challenge uh, when we're drawing eyes is often overcoming that instinct. Um, and what we wanna focus on in this one or what I, what I, I find the, the biggest challenge is to understand that the eye isn't a singular thing. It's kind of a system. It's a, it's, a, it's a group of things all working together. So you have the eyeball that has features in it, and you've got the iris and the pupil. You've got eyelids, you've got eyelashes, you've got the brow, you've got tear ducts. All of those things work together to create an eye. Um, and so that's what we really want to try to focus in on this um, in this uh, example here. So the first thing I'm going to do is start toning the paper. So I've, I'm not using the rag paper today. I'm using just kind of a smooth sketch paper. Um, and it's accepting the charcoal uh, differently. I'm just kind of building up a tone here um, to that I can, you know, kind of smooth out and I'm gonna to start to build up the values. And what I wanna to try to do is avoid the instinct to start by drawing the lines for the eye. What I wanna do is focus on the shadow and, and build it from an understanding of light and shadow. So if I look back here at the reference photo, you can start to see this overall shadow shape right in here, and that's what I wanna start with. And then as we build the, the drawing, we're going to start to see subtle variations within that. So we can see light on this side, shadow in here, a kind of triangular shape of light there. And then even in the eyeball, this side of the eyeball is in light, this side is in shadow, and that creates that three-dimensional effect. So I'm going to be talking through that a bit. And so what I want to do is now is start to see the overall proportions of that shadow shape. Um, so if you're kind of new here, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, the, the term shadow shape might be a little confusing. Uh, so when, uh, we've talked about this in, in other videos as well, but there are three main shadow terms that you wanna be aware of. There's the form shadow, which is the, a shadow on an object. Uh, and so in this case, the form shadow is over the eyeball um, and it's you know the, the eye socket as well. There's the cast shadow, so there's a shadow cast by an object. And in this case, the eyebrow is casting a bit of a shadow in that eye socket. And then there's a form shadow, or the sh I mean, uh, the, uh, the shadow shape, which is the combination of the two. And that's really what I wanna see here is I wanna see this overall shadow shape and establish that first. I'm just using vine charcoal right now. It's a soft vine charcoal. I'm gonna lose this quite a bit. Squinting at the reference photo really helps to see that, that shadow shape. Um, when we focus on the eye, um, we tend to lose 
uh, a sense of that overall value contrast or the shape of that shadow. Um, so when I'm when I'm squinting at the reference, both at the screen and in front of me, I'm trying to see this overall shape. And there's a little bit of a shadow kind of coming over here. Um, one of the things again we've also talked about is is, is developing the ability to think um, at uh, think about the objects um, simultaneously as abstract shapes as well as kind of logical forms. So at this stage, I'm thinking about this just as an abstract shape. I'm trying to forget that I'm drawing an eye here. I'm trying to just focus on the abstract shape. I want to take some time to call everybody out. We got a lot of people here. Um, we're from all over. Hello, hello. Um, if you do have any questions as we go along, feel free to, to type your questions in all caps. I'll, I'll um, be able to, to see them more easily. Um, and at the end of the session, I'm going to try to go back and and capture some that I missed. I missed um, a few last time as well. I can't remember who it was asked a question about um, kind of explaining the direction of marks as they relate to the planes of the object. And that's something I'm going to be talking about as well in this video. So if you're on, if you made that question, that, that comment, or if you posted that question um, and I didn't get to you last time, uh, I'm going to be calling that out. At this point, I'm thinking less about direction of marks because this is such a smooth paper that I'm able to kind of move the, the vine charcoal around uh, and, and lose, lose any kind of directionality. But as we move through the drawing, I'm going to be bringing that back in. So now I want to start to, as I've got the basic form being established, I don't know if it's correct at this point, I'm just kind of blocking it in. Um, I'm going to start to think through the overall shapes, kind of working within this basic shadow form, really reacting to the angles uh, that I'm seeing in the reference. Uh, and one of the things that can be really helpful is to utilize a technique that we've talked about a lot in, in this series of drawing curves as a sequence of short, straight marks that accumulate together to create a curve versus um, trying to think of, trying to hit that all in one curve. So when I address the overall curve of the upper eyelid or the lower eyelid, I want to try to do that as a sequence of short marks rather than single ones. Um, I'm not hitting these values correctly at this point. I am just trying to think about how they kind of block together. I'm looking at this shadow form. So there's a lot of uh, there, there's a there are a lot there's a lot of benefit to working with the with an eye as a subject. Um, it's something again that we've addressed before is this idea of kind of seeing you know the you know the forest for the trees. You know we've got a, a lot happening in here, but um, we want to try to see them as a unified whole rather than individual pieces. Like drawing you you know try to think of not just drawing like the, the eyeball and then the eyelid and the eyebrow as separate things, but it's all one system. And we want to think about the whole first and then gradually break it up into these parts. So that's really what we're doing here is I'm trying to think about the overall shape and seeing how there's a little bit of shadow here. There's a lot of light on this side. Um, and then we move across into shadow here. I'm going to try to see the shape of that shadow that crosses over the eyeball. Uh, and then, uh, and then we'll add some more specificity there. I think I want to make this a little bit larger. I think I want to zoom in a bit more. So I can just wipe that all down, start to build up that shadow a little bit more. I'm switching back and forth between looking at the reference photo on, in front of me here and then the reference photo that's on the screen in front of me. And I'm trying not to Try not to focus uh, at, as much. I'm just thinking about this as an abstract shape, squinting my eyes and really trying to see this form here. It's almost like a, there's a, it's kind of a cylindrical form uh, across here that, that there's a shadow cast, um, casting across. And then I'll be able to break that up into smaller bits in a little bit. So. I don't really have a sense for how long this is going to take me. So stick around, but if you can't, if this is too long, all of this goes back up as a recording afterwards, so you're 
you know, come back and and uh, you know check it out a little bit later. So now what I'm doing as I'm as I'm looking at this shape, there's kind of there are kind of specific angles that I want to be aware of. It's it's fairly horizontal across here. There's this kind of key point in here where it gets a little bit darker, kind of wraps up and then down. So we follow along the bridge of the nose here. Um, and then as we come across, there's a little bit of shadow down in here that I was working on earlier, but I want to see it in relation to this mark across here and see that there's a bit of an angle um, to that, to the, if I connect those two dots and then come down in here, kind of check that angle to make sure that it all fits together. There we go. All right, so that's feeling like generally the shape is, is coming together pretty well. Um, so a question about what pencil you should use to get a similar effect. The softest um, graphite pencil you can find will work. I mean, if you have like just a regular yellow number two kind of simple pencil, um, you can you can get a similar effect, but if you could find one that's softer, so Mark just said uh, starting with a 9B woodless graphite, that would be a perfect uh, 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 tool to use. That's, um, that's a really soft material that should get you a similar effect uh, at this stage in the drawing. Yeah, Martin said 8B. Yeah, once you get that deep into the 8s, when you're like an 8 or a 9B, it's, <laughs> it's all really soft. Um, I'm preferring this, this charcoal. So, so now I am going to start to kind of build up the, the overall structure. So looking at uh, some of these lines within the shadow, keeping my eyes blurred, because I don't want to be focusing too heavily at this point, and trying to get a sense of whether or not these, these angles or proportions are right are all right. So uh, one of the things that I've learned from a few uh, great portrait artists, so I filmed with um, Christy Gordon um, and Nathaniel Skousen recently. Um, these, th these are really strong portrait artists, you know, you learn a lot about the structure of the eye. And um, one of the things that I learned from them is that there's kind of an asymmetry to the eye. So that upper eyelid, we tend, it tends to be a little bit higher on the inside of the eye. And then a the lower eyelid, it tends to be a little bit lower on the outside of it. Um, and so, and we can kind of see that in the reference photo here, there's this general shape where the low point of the lower eyelid is over here the high point and the upper eyelid is over here. So they're not directly opposite one another. There's, it's just to the left of uh, the pupil on the lower eyelid, just to the right of the pupil um, on that top. So um, kind of being aware of that asymmetry can be really helpful. And also kind of not defining the shapes. We have an instinct to want to make really hard lines up here in the top, but you can see in this reference photo at least, it becomes really abstract and soft here as the, the eyelashes and the shadow all kind of merge into this one kind of soft shape. And I'm prioritizing these darker shapes here because I'm still trying to think about abstract, abstract um, kind of shadow shapes at this point. And all of this is going to get kind of lost as I go, and I'm going to reestablish because uh, this is all very soft material. So a lot of what I'm doing at this stage is more, it's, it's more valuable for me to um, get my thinking correct and my observations correct uh, than getting the marks correct. And so all of these marks are going to disappear at some point. So again, just kind of keeping my eyes blurred, squinting, seeing this overall shape. Even when I'm, I'm smudging, I'm trying not to kind of burnish into the paper too much. Um, and then this paper too, is going to, it's going to pick up the, the charcoal pretty well with my eraser. Um, so just to kind of show you, you know, off to the side here is that I can still pull up some of that, that charcoal pretty well. It's releasing nicely. Um, but this is still so light that I'm not really worried about erasing out highlights. I want to continue to build up darks. Um, one of the things that is also, um, uh, one of the things you, you, we learn early on when you start drawing eyeballs is that the whites of the eyes aren't white. Um, they're often in shadow. They're in the shadow of the eye socket. 
uh, and then there's a transition across there, and there's often a highlight uh, that can be helpful to observe. All right, let's see, just trying to think through these kind of, they're kind of landmarks that I'm looking for, right? Right in here, there's this dark part right here in the eyelid where it tucks in underneath the, the brow. There's some eyelashes coming along across in here. And I want to see how they all kind of fit together. Kind of right in here. I'm feeling pretty good about these proportions as I'm going. <clears throat> Again, trying, one of the things I've talked about a lot is that I may be focusing on this area, maybe working on this area, but I'm also trying to put my attention on other parts of the drawing. So I'm thinking about where this mark is in relationship to this mark, comparing that to what I'm seeing in the reference to help hold that together. So again, this is this um, shifting a focus between uh, the small area and then the whole. So the detail and the small parts versus the, uh, the entire form. And I haven't drawn the, the pupil yet. I'm going to kind of leave that out. I just want to be thinking about this shape in here. Continuing to build that. I'm going to add some more specificity to it in a bit. Trying to keep my eyes blurred. Thinking about this as an abstract shape as much as possible. Trying not to think I. So as, soon as, I as soon as I lock on to it being an I, and then I know I run the risk of falling back into that symbol system and start drawing what I think it should look like rather than what it actually does. And one of the benefits to working from uh, your own eye is that you see it a lot um, and, the, and, you, and you can start to see how unique each one is. Um, you know, maybe con contrast it against this one and see how... Um, you know, see how they how they relate, how they compare. You know, everybody's got a different structure. My my eye's a little bit heavy here in this upper eyelid that it that kind of folds over. Some people have less of that. Um, some people have more. You know, as we get older, that shape changes. So squinting, and again, just trying to think of this as an abstract form as much as possible. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for uh, following along here. Drawing on the right side of the brain. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really, that's one of the early books that I looked at that it's helped a lot of people. Turning the reference image upside down. Yeah, um, uh, is another good example, another good way to kind of disassociate our, um, ourselves from the object and it becomes really just an object versus something that's defined. One of the things I tell my students is that I, you know, when I did some research into a field of study called neuroaesthetics, or neuroaesthetics, it's there's this field of, of of neuroscience that's dedicated to understanding how we observe things, and the one of the books that I read, and I can't remember which one it was now, but laid out the case that we our our vision and our our perception of things exists on three main levels. Uh, so as the information comes and you know as light through our eyes into our brain, we're interpreting it on the first level as, uh, which is a very primitive level, as just an object. You know, it's it's just the pure raw data that the light is transmitting um, to us. Um, then uh, the uh, the after as that happens, the next level of your brain takes over and it starts to define that. It says this is an eye, it's in light, it belongs to this person. Um, and, and that's where our preconceptions start to, um, to work themselves in. Uh, and then the, the, le the level above that then becomes emotion. The next part of our brain gets engaged and we start to apply emotions to it. How do we feel about that? What do we do with this object? Um, what does that mean to us? And for most of us, what's mo most relevant and what we respond to most are those upper levels and and we and they kind of override our just the raw data so what i talk with my students a lot about is that 
you know, our goal, if you're trying to make something look realistic, is to try to shut down those portions of your brain that are thinking about all the emotional aspects to it, trying to define it, trying to label it, and just focus on the, the pure raw data that's coming into your eyes. Uh, and then if you do that, once you've had that established on your drawing, you can then start to build in uh, additional meanings and layers of meaning on top of that, maybe adding some more emotion and, or maybe how you're even choosing your subject in the beginning um, is emotionally driven and then as you start to render it you're focusing on really what it looks like um, and it just as pure light and they've done some studies where they've used a magnet to shut down a portion of the frontal lobe and they found that um, those subjects um, temporarily become kind of better artists they start to render things with more realism uh, so that's just something to kind of consider because uh, especially uh, we can fall into this trap of overthinking um, we think so hard about trying to get everything right and you just want to almost kind of step back let all of those thoughts go away and just kind of fall into what's in front of you um, and just look at those those simple shapes so um, hopefully that makes sense but um, and now as you can see I'm just trying to build more specificity into the shadow shape the shape of the eye is starting to come together. I'm going to make some adjustments as I go. Uh, and I think at this point, I think I want to um, build up a little bit more value in this portion of the drawing and then erase out those highlights. I might artificially kind of adjust the, the contrast in this to bring a little bit more focus to the eyeball. Uh, so what I'm thinking about is isolating that highlight right there on the pupil so that becomes the lightest light. In the reference that I have, it's a little bright over here um, on the, the flesh outside of the eyeball. And so I might just artificially knock that down. So I'm not worried about losing too much of that here. I've got two erasers. I've got my kneaded eraser and I've got my rubber eraser that I've kind of carved into this sharp edge so I can utilize that for some of the detailed areas. I'm gonna do the same over here. Using the palm of my hand to smooth a bit more. All right. How are we feeling about this? All right, getting some good comments here again. Feel free to shout out any questions. I think now I want to kind of loosely establish The, the pupil. So what I want to do is now that I have a, a rough idea of where that lower eyelid is and where the upper eyelid is and I feel like that shape is fairly correct, I want to look at how they're placed there. Um, one of the things that you learn as you study anatomy is that the, the, the eyelids are actually um, a little bit lower. They're not centered right over the pupil. Um, so as a result, we get this uh, often this asymmetry where the pupil will be a little bit higher um, and kind of resting on that lower eyelid and get cut off a bit by the upper eyelid. Um, and of course, if we're looking in a different direction, it's going to change that. But if just in a relaxed position, um, the, the pupil sits a little bit higher, the eyelids sit a little bit lower um, and kind of underneath the eyeball. So if I were to look at it on the side, um, the, the upper eyelid would be kind of in front, the lower eyelid would be just kind of tucked in underneath that. Um, and so I'm kind of thinking about that and not kind of taking for granted or kind of utilizing again that symbol system um, that would tell me to place that circle right in the middle between the two eyelids. Uh, so and I can utilize uh, that same technique of kind of breaking the, the, the shape of the pupil into short, straight sections. And I'm at a, at a slight angle with this, and so it's a little bit narrower than it is tall, so it's not a perfect circle. And I'm gonna get into the structure of the, the pupil, um, the iris. Um, a little bit more, so. And there's a little bit of asymmetry. This, this pupil here is not right in the middle. Um, there's, a, there's a shape to it that actually pushes this off just a little bit. All right. Let me 
There's some value here. I can kind of darken this a little bit here. Looking at that negative shape in here to make sure that that's correct. So what I was doing here is kind of working my way up to find the pupil, find the iris, and where the lower eyelid meets it. Looking at these two shadows to see where they're at in relationship to one another. All right, now looking at it in front of me, I feel like this could come up a little bit more. Let me bring this down a little bit more. You can see it's not a hard line, it's a shadow as those eyelids and the portion of the eye, the eye socket as they kind of fold in on one another. And I think this needs to be kind of brought down, rounded out a little bit more. All right, seeing some, um, seeing some comments here. The th those three steps called. Uh, um, Somebody posted a comment asking what the three steps are called. If you wanted to clarify that, kind of lost track of where we were. So um, about which three steps you might be referring to. Are you talking about the visual processes? Um, all right. All right, let's see. Uh, Sean B158, I can't quite see what you're trying to share. So, somebody's out there weed whacking today. We're supposed to get snow here in Colorado. Ugh. This, this is the winter that will just never seem to stop. Well, I don't know what happened here. I must have, there's a little dark spot there. That must be a little bit of, a little bit of water that spilled on the page. All right, so now I think what I want to do is to start to bring in my charcoal pencil to add some more kind of depth and more permanence to it. Now you can see that I haven't done the, the eyelashes or the eyebrow. Uh, I want to start to think about the overall shape. And this is where the, the directionality of the marks comes to play a little bit more. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about two things at the same time. There's this overall structure to the eyebrow. There's an angle here, and then the eyebrow comes in front. So what I'm looking at here is actually in front of this. So, and there's a good you know, half inch or an inch of depth between this and that. And this plane comes up, and it wraps around, um, and then it comes back into that eye socket. And you can see kind of subtle folds and creases in the skin that you can start to replicate with the direction of your marks. So I'm just using the pencil. I'm holding it way back here to keep the pressure light and I'm thinking about the direction of the marks here. Uh, looking at the direction of the skin as well and trying to think about the cross contour. Um, so when we, if, you, if you're new to this series, uh, one of the things we've talked a lot about in some of the older ver videos are, is, is in the, the idea of contour and cross contour. So the contour line represents the outer edge of an object. The cross contour at lines um, represent the structure of the object within that edge. And that's really what we have here uh, that we're working on. And that's what we can utilize to help reinforce the sense of form in our drawing. So we have this plane that kind of comes out. It's like a shelf. And then comes up and wraps around into that eyebrow. And we go from shadow into light at the top. So I can look at that structure. And then I can also start to look at the, the flow and the directionality of the eyebrow, the individual hairs there. And I don't want to get caught too much up into individual hairs at this point. I'm just thinking about the flow and letting my marks kind of react to that. If that makes sense. And I don't have to necessarily smooth that out here. Keeping these marks light as we go from light side into shadow side, as we go into the shadow side, we can start to make them darker and more permanent.
Ah, the visual process, yes. So the three steps, um, again, uh, that I know of, and I, I don't quite know what they're specifically called, but as the, as the light passes from the object through your, through your eyes, through the system here, it hits the back of your eye, um, and it travels down the optic nerve into your brain. And the first part of the brain that's going to be engaged is the, uh, the part of the brain that is a bit more primitive, a bit older, that, uh, that simply recognizes the object as a shape, as an abstract shape, without any sort of preconception or anything, is just raw data. Um, the next level, uh, the next part of your brain that gets engaged by that starts to think about what that object is called and what do we do with that object. So if it's a hammer, for example, you know, that first layer would just look at it as just, it's just a shape, it's just an object. The next level says, oh, that's metal, it's wood, it's put together in a hammer and I can do something with it. The layer on top of that would say, would be the emotional one. So the third la level that gets engaged is the emotional part of your brain. Generally, I believe it's in the front uh, portion, kind of in the amygdala, that would um, have emotion tied to it, maybe memories, and say, what have I done with this in the past? How did I feel about it? Is it a painful? Is it a pleasurable experience? Uh, those types of things. And it's those higher levels that we tend to operate because that's actually typically more valuable to us as humans. Uh, we want to know what these things do and what their potential is, how we feel about it, um, not just just as, as raw data. If we if we walk through the world as we do with art as as artists, you know, we may not uh, get actually a whole lot out of it. Um, so what we want to do is we want to build those three layers into your own artwork. Um, if you if you kind of shut down those upper levels of thinking, th you know, cut out the emotion cut out the definition, just think of them as abstract forms, um, then it starts to become more optically real. And then you can use some of your tools um, available to you as artists to make them more emotional and really pull the viewer into your, uh, into your work. Okay, so let me see. I'm going to kind of work back and forth. I don't want to stay in one spot too long. And so as I'm looking at these hairs, I'm, I'm mostly thinking about value at this point, um, but I'm trying to think about the flow of the hairs that form the eyebrow. And um, try, to, uh, try to kind of replicate what's in front of me. And I want to make sure that I don't lose that shadow shape too. I want to still think about this overall shadow shape. And actually what I might do is you know, start to pull out some more, more specific shapes in here. So what I'm doing is I'm making these marks, I'm putting a little bit more pressure at the start and then just kind of flicking it off in the direction that I want. So you want to think clearly before you make these marks about what direction you want to go in, how long you want that mark to be. Um, and I'm still holding it on its side. One of the advantages to doing this is that I've, I've, as I work on the side, I always have kind of a sharp ridge that I can utilize and it's not kind of embossing into the page. If I, if I switch to this tripod grip and I push the point down, there's a tendency for it to really embed in the paper, sometimes too much. So I'm just trying to let the side of it scrape across the page. Some of these individual hairs would get a little bit more, more clean, more clear and easy to see. And in this case, there's kind of a scoop to some of these marks, so I found it perhaps a bit easier to kind of reverse my uh, the, the marks that I'm making a little bit. Um, and so one of the, the advantages to doing this a little bit early on is that I can come back in and I can reestablish the, the shadow shape and help anchor everything together. We want to make sure that we're not um, that we're not losing a sense of unity in the drawing, that we want to have a feeling that everything kind of belongs together and I run the risk if I overdefine the individual hairs at this point, I run the risk of it 
really just kind of popping off the page and separating from the uh, from the rest of the drawing. So if I feel like any of those individual hairs really just are sitting on the surface, I can kind of wash over it with my charcoal to, to anchor it back down. Um, you're welcome there. Everybody doing okay? Um, now what I'm seeing too is I'm, I'm, there's a bit of a disconnect. I'm thinking about the, the left side of the eyebrow as I'm working on it and I have it directly above these creases here. In the reference photo I think I need to come out a little bit more. Uh, there's a bit of an angle. I can start to see this this kind of shadow shape. So what this is right here, it's a, it's a kind of the, a bony part of the, the eye socket. You see some of the great portrait artists, somebody like Rembrandt for example, he had a really kind of keen awareness of the materiality of, of the face. You know, when we go from kind of hard bone directly under the surface of the skin to something that's softer where there's, you know, more muscle or, or something underneath it. Uh, and he had the, uh, a really strong ability to be able to uh, represent that in paint. And so it's something to kind of think about as you go through. Um, this is where we, we kind of switch back and forth between thinking about it abstractly versus thinking about the anatomy or the, the, the real physical structure is um, I, can, I see it as a sh an abstract shape first, but then when I layer onto that, the idea that this, oh, this is hard bone, what does that do to my understanding of that? How might it change my marks? Um, and I can start to see can perhaps kind of a sharper division here. Uh, and then we shift into this part of the eyelid where it's a little bit softer. I'm going to avoid, I'm going to avoid lifting out the highlights at this point. But I'm going to come back into it later. I want to start to anchor in some of the darks. Um, so I'm getting into some of the detail in this area so that then I can come back in and, and make sure that it's, um, that it's anchored. I'm building up value and the shadow back in on top of it. And so now I'm looking at this portion, thinking about the directionality of the, the creases that I'm seeing in the skin. Not necessarily focusing on getting them 100% accurate, I'm just using them as guides. All right. So a little bit of reflected light underneath this portion as we get underneath the eye socket, uh, but I want to be careful not to overstate that. I still want to think about what I'm or trying to do is kind of keep my awareness on the, the shadow shape as it passes over the eye here. And you can see my hand has kind of eliminated this shadow down here, so I need to start reestablishing that. Just using the side of my pencil, letting the weight of it make its own marks. And when I need to add a little bit more, I can kind of lean in on it. So what I'm doing, I've got the reference photo in front of me right now. So I'm looking at the angles here. So as I look at that angle, my peripheral vision is, being, is aware of what's happening here. I can see the movement of my pencil. And what I want to do is make sure that that movement matches the angle that I'm seeing in front of me. I almost, it, it, for, in my mind, it feels like I'm actually tracing it. They're just, if you can imagine kind of tracing the object directly on top of your drawing, um, and then just offsetting that, um, having that same mindset of tracing, but just not having them directly on top of one another. That's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about at this point. I don't, my, I don't want my lines to become too hard and dark at this point. Just thinking about some of these lines. And so in here, there are some kind of more distinct shadows that I can start to define. Just using my, the side of the pencil to kind of skip across the page.
And then when I get that back down in here, thinking about this shadow shape. I'm gonna see how, how big this shadow is. I'm gonna use the height of the eye. So what I'm doing is measuring this height here, comparing it, and I can see that this from this mark here to the lower eyelid is about the same as the distance between the lower and upper eyelids. So my drawing, I want to kind of reflect that. Start to block in these lines here. Looking at the lines, the creases underneath the eye there. And I'm going to build into the shadow shape. I'm going to reestablish that. Because my I picked up all that charcoal on the side of my hand, so that's all my the my original shadows have kind of gone. How do we feel about that? I think I want to bring this up a little bit. Chris, <laughs> Chris, I just read your comment about you're just looking at something out of a horror movie. Well, and just keep at it. You'll get it. Um, I know that feeling. I have hundreds of drawings that just are gone, and they didn't achieve my intended objective. That's all right. Every drawing is a win as long as you walk away understanding two things. Two things that you want to be aware of as you're evaluating your work. Uh, what needs to be improved? And what are you doing right? If you're not thinking about what you're doing right, you're less likely to repeat it. Uh, if you focus so much on what's not going well, um, that's ultimately what's actually going to be repeated in the next drawing. So make sure you take the time to really say, yeah, this I hit this part or I got this part of the process correct. Um, it also can be different, difficult to, you know, to, uh, to really lock in on what isn't working. Um, it's, it's easy to say, hey, this just doesn't look right. Um, but what I found is a, a, a bigger challenge is to just determine what aspect does not look right. You know, what is it in that process that's off? And that's, that gets really a challenge, gets really challenging sometimes. So um, I'm going to run some marks vertically, thinking about the structure of this lower portion of the eyelid here. And really seeing this almost as a cylindrical form, moving from shadow into light, and then back and do a little bit of shadow over here again. And I'm going to come across. I want to think about some of the basic structure. We can start to see, again, hard bone right here in the cheekbone. It's kind of lightly blocking in that shape. Uh, so as I'm making these marks here, it's almost kind of like a rocking motion to build up this soft value where it's light on either ends, and I'm kind of kind of lifting it at both ends and just letting it set on the page right kind of in the middle of the area that I want and that prevents me from creating the, the kind of hard almost burrs at the end of them at the end of these marks all right and this is really going to start to come to life as I start to um, erase out the highlights It's an interesting, interesting form right in here where it shifts into this cool feature here. And it's hard to tell whether is that, is that in shadow or in light, or is there kind of both? Is there, is there bounce light happening in this portion of it? I'm gonna come up over here. All right. So now I feel like I can start to really move into this portion of the eye. So if, as I look here, you know, look at how the shadow kind of rolls around. So we have light up here, it rolls into shadow, and then we have that darker portion here where the crease is. And that helps to create that three-dimensional quality. And that's something that's really kind of critical. And if you can, can try to see the change in planes. Even in this small area, we have a, a plane that emerges out this way and that lower portion of the eyelid. 
And then as we get into that crease, as we emerge out above it, it starts to kind of wrap around like this and underneath it. So look at, use the, use the texture of the, the skin to And then I want to see how this kind of, there's a light that kind of emerges out of that squinting. There's no really defined portion here that those eyelashes just kind of all kind of blend together in there. And then there's a shadow cast on the, on the eyeball from that upper eyelid. I'm going to drop this into shadow again. That can come down in value here. So you can see that, that strong contrast between light and dark. And I think I need to actually darken this a little bit more so that when I pull out that highlight, it's gonna, it's gonna show off a little bit better. All right. And then if I look at the structure of the eyeball, there's the shape of the shadow that's being cast onto it. And then there's the shape on top of it that kind of contrasts against it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to utilize the direction of my marks to create some of these eyelashes here. And it's cool, we can kind of see in the highlight on the eye some of the, um, some of the eyelashes coming across it. So here's where I think I can start to pull out some of the, the light. It's just a kneaded eraser here. So I'm gonna pull out that overall shape. I made that too big. And I'm gonna to start to define that a little bit more. Looking at the directionality of some of those marks in that highlight. That vine charcoal is so soft on this paper, it just kind of disappeared. How are we feeling about that? That feels all right. If I need to, I can come back in with my kind of rubber eraser to pull out some bright spots in between the eyelashes. So I'm kind of building up layers now, so adding some detail in there. And now I'm gonna contrast kind of the direction of these eyelashes here with more directionless marks here, using circular marks in this area. All right. You can see some, some eyelashes kind of coming out in this, it's falling into that shadow. All right. All right, thank you, Steve, those comments. Squinting, thinking about the overall forms. And I wanna be really careful not to make a hard line here around the iris. It's actually fairly soft. So I can let those, those edges be a little bit softer in here. Now I'm not really bearing down on this, so this looks very dark right now, but I know I can go a little bit darker, and I'm gonna need that in a little bit. I'm just gonna block this in as, a, as an overall value. Come back up to here. Or I'm gonna kind of create a little bit more contrast around that highlight. So as I darken the area around that highlight, if it's gonna make that highlight kind of pop off a bit more. Um, I can start to simulate the texture of the eyelashes and they're going in all sorts of wonky directions here. I'm doing that, so I've, I've blocked in the values, adding some of that detail now, because I know that if I make them too defined, they're gonna, it's actually gonna degrade the form, it's gonna make the form that's clear. And so I want to add them in now, and then if I need to anchor them back down, I can kind of wash over it 
and kind of soften it into place there. So as I try to define the lower eyelid, keeping the marks light as much as possible, because I don't want it to read like a line. I want that to read like a value shift. So here what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the lower eyelid kind of as a shelf. So there's a, there's a top portion here, and then it makes that turn down along the side. So I want to start to see that as much as possible. Again, blocking this in value. As I, when I squint my eyes at this, it, that this portion of the, the white of the eyeball just kind of disappears. Um, and so I can utilize that a little bit more. You know, that you can, we, we're very good at seeing subtle shifts in value. So it doesn't take a whole lot. Smudging out a little bit. This one's a bit intense right now. I need to take a breath. <laughs> so I'm um, going to keep working. I'm going to come back into this, kind of saving the best for last. I think I, this is the point now where I want to start to add uh, some more detail so then I can anchor it back if I overstate it. So with the, the lower eyelashes, they kind of they kind of clump together. They're not all coming out of the, exactly the same. So you want to be careful not to have them uh, become a sequence of marks all moving in the same direction. You don't have to get it, you know, 100% right. You know, if I've got an eyelash off here or there, as long as we understand the basic structure, that's what we're going for. And what you can see is that there's uh, along that ridge, they tend to come out along that turn going from the top shelf down to that lower side of the uh, eyelid there. So I, I can restate those if I need to, but now I'm coming back in and just kind of anchoring them with more, um, more shading. All right, let's see. I think what I need to do so I need to start to define some of these creases, and I don't want to think of them as lines, I want to think of them as thin shadows. So thinking about the directionality of them, just letting the charcoal kind of skip across the page, lightening up as we get into the shadow area. And I'm going to think about here, so we have a kind of a natural shift in the shadow of value, where it's a little bit lighter in here. So I'm kind of losing this form a bit. So I'm going to smooth that all out. I think I re need to reestablish this. And then here I can you know, lift out. I think I need to that's a bit too extreme. What I'm seeing is this mark is too extreme here. It needs to come across a bit more. And I think what I need to do is I'm going to drop this down a little bit like that. I'm going to smooth this out, block that in again, and then I can just want to keep these marks light because I, I don't want to overstate this. And you're going to see I'm going, to, I'm going to kind of define that edge in a little bit by pulling out some of those highlights. I feel like that shape works a little bit better now. Yes, I'm going to be um, you know, adding, adding highlights into this area a bit. I haven't really addressed this uh, very much at all. Um, there's a really particular shape to this that, um, that can be helpful to understand kind of the anatomy of the, the, the eye, the pupil, the cornea, 
the iris view that says that that thinks about the portrait as a sequence of features the eyes the nose and the mouth um, and trying to think also about the, the areas that connect between them. So the transition between the eye and the nose, the transition between the nose and the mouth, um, and, and really building the form around that, building that first, and then building the features into that. And so, you know, hopefully that's something that we're gonna be able to address in future videos is, um, is the overall kind of scope of, the, of a portrait and uh, in how to make them all fit together, but I, I want to make sure that now that I have this kind of roughed in, that I'm giving enough attention to the structure around it. Because once I, it, and I kind of, I kind of <laughs> tell my students, it's kind of like, you know, saving dessert for last. If you, if you go right out of the gate, going for what is ultimately most attractive in the scene, which is the, the, the pupil and the iris, um, then, uh, then we tend to just lose steam. I'm just, I'm so excited to get to that. And I want to keep that excitement going. If I get that right out of the gate, then I find myself being less engaged by the rest of the drawing. So part of that is kind of a strategic um, move to withhold gratification a little bit. I'm trying to keep this light. All right. I feel like now what I need to do is start to build out some of the structure using my eraser. So I've got my kneaded eraser. Um, and I want to be thinking about the overall structure um, and texture of the of the light and the skin there and so it's kind of kind of rough I'm, and I'm letting it just kind of skip across the page to try to simulate the the texture thinking about the the, the cross contour of that looking in here where there's a little bit more light coming across in here I'm not pulling out the really sharp highlights so I'm just, again, just kind of tapping across the page. And that helps to simulate the texture. I can, I can erase, lift off some of this here. Let that be a little bit softer to help bring focus into here. And I feel like I can make this a little bit more, more visible, a little bit more contrast across here. Sharpening that, this down to kind of a, a wedge to get in and start to utilize that as a way to reinforce the, uh, the texture of the eyebrow. And then here we start to see kind of more distinct highlights across the texture of the, the skin. Um, and by letting your, your kind of marks kind of tap across the surface, you want to be careful not to create kind of rigid sequences of marks, these repetitive marks there, um, that can often kind of pull us out of the realism. So thinking about where the highlight is along the nose. So we turn around the eyeball here, and then we kind of turn at an angle and then up towards the bridge of the nose. So that's what I'm trying to be aware of here. Again, just using the, using my understanding of the direction of the marks to reflect the, the drawing. So I'm trying to keep my marks light and loose and just kind of let the, the, the natural tendency of the kneaded eraser to create irregular marks do its thing. Um, and it, just like when I'm drawing with charcoal, when I'm using the kneaded eraser, pressure is an important element. So I'm just using the weight of the eraser right now. And then I can, uh, if I need to, I can pull out some more kind of stronger highlights. And there's, uh, so there's two directions that I'm thinking about here as we wrap around the eyeball. There's this kind of curve, um, and then there's this vertical element to it that I want to kind of reflect as well. So as I come across here, I also want to see how there's some subtle highlights and some of the folds and creases there. Pushing down a little bit more. Let this just be kind of become a little bit softer, letting that, that texture kind of transition off the page. All right, so now, I'm gonna, I think I'm, I'm at a, a point now where I can really start to focus right on the, the in, in this part here, 
doing pretty good on time, only about an hour in. So hopefully you're, you're enjoying this, um, and even if it's not going well, you're just kind of enjoying the, just the, the time to draw together. Uh, I, I feel like I need to, before I get here, I do, do need to kind of reestablish this shape here a bit more. It's kind of throwing off things a little bit in the structure for me. There's some creases that, that are helpful to identify. So here I'm making these thin lines as a sequence of short marks that accumulate together rather than one solid line. All right, and I think what I wanna do is utilize some contrasting texture. So I somewhat smooth things out in the kind of the flesh around the eyeball um, but if I, if I take my, my shading stump here, I can really start to create some contrast where this can become smoother and then the area around it becomes a little bit more rough. But also, it's picking up the charcoal. That's all right. I'm going to lay that back in a little bit more later. So keeping this line soft. And you can see how dark that actually is. And I'm kind of intentionally keeping it fairly dark to keep that highlight strong. And now what I want to do is this line under here is a bit too strong. And there's a, a bit of a highlight kind of catching in, excuse me, in that area where there's, you know, there's, there's kind of a wetness to the, um, the eyeball, some surface tension in the, in the, the water there that um, allows it to kind of pool up into this little ridge. Pull out some of the highlights here along this ridge of the lower eyelid. And then and also by, by utilizing the eraser at this point, after I've done the eyelashes, those, those eraser marks help to kind of anchor the, uh, the eyelashes so they don't just jump off the page. And then if I need to have a little bit kind of more detail, I can utilize kind of the ridge of this, this eraser to add some of that suggestion of detail. All right, and now that's a little bit overstated, so I can, I can refine that highlight using my shading stump. And I come cut back into it and give it a little bit more of a specific shape. It's a little dark, but I, I can come back in and lift that out a bit. There's a little bit of light right in here. And that's far too big. But I'm going to come back in, pull that out a little bit. So I've just kind of pulled out those highlights. Now I'm going to trim them back to make them a little less visible. And I can do the same thing over here. These are just little pinpricks of light. And those are really helpful in simulating the, the texture of the eyeball. So how does that read? All right, that works out all right. So one of the things that is helpful to know about the structure of the eye is you have the eye whites here and then you have the cornea on top of it. The cornea as a lens actually juts out on top of it. So it's not a smooth and perfect circle over the, the eyeball. It's smooth and then it kind of bumps out again on top of it. Then when you look at the iris, the iris is actually a cone that shapes inward toward the pupil, which is just a hole in that cone. Think about it as a, basically a funnel underneath the lens of the cornea. And so what you can start to see, and you see that in this photo, is that the way the light plays, um, we have light coming in from this direction. It makes this portion of the white a little bit brighter than what we have over here where it's in shadow. This part of the iris, which is, again, a cone angling inward, falls more into shadow. As we come around, this, this side of the, the iris is angled upward like this, and it's catching a little bit more light. So you get this alternating sequence of light and dark, where the light on this side goes into shadow, 
will go into the hole of the pupil and then into some light catching along here. Um, you can start to see that curve. You see that in the highlight along here, there's a slight change um, in that. In, in that, you can see the, the structure of that cornea on top of that, of that lens. And so if you're aware of that, that can be helpful in um, creating more realism. And so I want to now kind of refine this shape a little bit more using my shading stump. All right. And what's nice about this is the shading stump too is like you, you can you can look at the white of the eye and it's not perfectly smooth. It's not a perfect um, flat shape. There's some subtle kind of variation within that. Um, and before I lift any of that out, I feel like it's still it's a little bit too dark. I want to get into um, some of the detail here. So what I want to do is establish this. It really gets really dark right in this area. And it's kind of a sharp edge right up against that reflected light there. I'm going to see this overall shape and see what, which portions of the eye um, become a little bit clearer and which become less clear. Where is the lost and found edge? Uh, and in this case, it's really hard to see the, the edge of the pupil. It's not a hard circle. There's a kind of a transition as the, as the iris kind of falls into the pupil. So as I build up the value there, I can use my shading stump to kind of smooth it out and is picking up charcoal that I can then use to draw some of the detail in this. So this stays in shadow here. And you can kind of look at the patterns of light and dark in this area where it gets a little bit darker in some areas. I kind of just knocked that little highlight out. I like that little guy. So let me reestablish that. Add a little bit of sharpness here. This lower eyelid. Let's see, how does that... I still, I'm lifting that portion up too much. This needs to come across more like this and then down into that and I can start to kind of correct that form a little bit. Pulling out some of the, the light catching on this portion of the eyelid. That feels a little bit better. There's some texture here. It's not a, not a smooth line. And now that's too strong, and I can knock this back with a kind of a wash of charcoal on top of it. And put that back into shadow. Okay. Back into this portion, I want to start to add some of these, some of these uh, shapes here. So knowing that this is a cone, the iris is a cone, what that does is it, it shifts the pupil off to the left a little bit, just looking at the angle of that. Um, and so I, I can incorporate that into my drawing as well, not placing it directly in the middle. And especially knowing that it's, we're looking at this at an angle. It's not a perfect circle and they're not perfectly aligned. It's kind of a conical form. It moves the pupil off to the left, squishes this a bit so it's not a perfect circle. Building up some charcoal there. It doesn't look like a whole lot at this point, but I can add some of that detail. Um, and what I can do now is I, as using my eraser, I can start to pull out some of that the light portion of the, the iris along in here, 
creating a transition of light on this side until it reaches the, uh, the, the cast shadow on top of the eyelid, or cast from the eyelid on top of the eyeball, um, and then just gradually getting darker as we move across, something like that. And that adds a little bit more depth and form there. And I'm kind of losing some of that texture. I'm going to make that a little bit irregular. And then if I need to, I can come back in and, and start to add a little bit more kind of detail into this area here. Looking at some of the irregular patterns of light and dark. And those become a little bit more visible in this area where if I've lightened it, I've created a little bit more contrast. All right, I feel like that's working out all right. I can probably lift off just a little bit more in here to kind of create some texture. But I want to be careful not to for it to compete. So I think I lifted off too much. Um, so I can knock that back down. I'll wash over it. Um, and then here in this portion of the eyeball, I can kind of lift off some of that, that light as well. I don't want it to become too, uh, too bright. Smooth that out. Just using the shading stump here to Build in a little bit more value. You want to think about this as a ball, so it's a little bit darker on the edges. That line's a little bit too strong. So let me let me lift that out just a touch again. Um, I kind of like this little glint of light right in here that catches in that out lower eyelid just like that and that helps to provide some understanding of that form as well all right how's everybody feeling here sign it <laughs> yeah you think i'm done huh yeah i mean you could keep picking away at this i feel like it's uh it's kind of capturing what we're going for um I, you know this still feels a bit flat so i could come back in and using the ridge of this sharpened eraser um, add a little bit more texture, kind of suggestions, keep it light. Um, we don't want to add too much detail to, you know, pulling away from the focal point. Um, but I think we can, I think we can play around with this area a little bit. Um, but overall, I feel like it's come together pretty well. So hopefully you've taken some time to draw your own. Um, again, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, read the description if you haven't already. It's got a little bit more information about the materials I'm using. It's got the reference photo. Um, this video will stay up um, as a video recording, so you can always come back to it if you'd like to. There's a whole bunch of them in the series. I think we're at 11 now. So we've done quite a few. Um, and this is really all about just taking some time while we're at home to develop our drawing skills um, you know, focus on areas that we, you know, we may have been neglecting um, for some time. Uh, use this time to connect with other people, make new friends. So it's been a blast meeting everybody from all over the world. I didn't get a chance to really call out everybody. That it's, we're really starting to build a, uh, uh, a community here. Uh, but if you go to theartistnetwork.com, there's a page there that features more resources. It's, you can see drawing together at the top there. Uh, learn a bit more about me. Um, uh, look at some of the, the resources there. Uh, we've, we've been trying to create content that really helps people in this time to uh, you know, develop, develop your skills, find inspiration, meet new people, and, and call it good. So you're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome. Yeah, I think this turned out all right. You know, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> Especially uh, with uh, you know um, very easily, it's you know it's part of what unifies us 
um, as, as humans is what allows us to work together as a community. Um, and so, but it, it, it's a tremendous tool that we have that allows us to connect to people. We can read people so effectively. Um, but as it makes it a lot harder for us as artists because we, uh, we tend to notice everything that's off in a portrait. You know, a subtle shift to the shape of that lower eyelid changes the expression. Um, you know, if I open up the eyes a little bit more, it changes it. If I squint, there's a whole nother feeling. And we see that really easily. Um, and so we become hyper aware of what's off when we're dealing with, with portraits. And so I hope that you're being kind to yourself as you're working um, because it's, uh, it's really not easy. And, um, and again, we're, we're, we're more inclined to become aware of something that's, that's off. We're going to see it more clearly than perhaps with a, uh, another object. So again, just be kind to yourself. So glad you enjoyed it. Um, what do we have up next? Oh yeah, this is perfect on, uh, on Friday. We'll be working on that kind of shifting away from the features, but we're going to be coming back next week. There's going to be more. I've got a hand. I've got an ear that I'm going to try drawing because I don't think I've really ever drawn an ear, um, as, as just a, just a singular object. And I'm kind of curious about that form. Uh, so I'm going to take some time to, uh, come back to uh, the thread here, see if I missed any questions. Um, all right. All right, Wilma, those are good comments. Thank you. I, I enjoy seeing all of these positive comments. If I'm not making myself clear with any of the statements, feel free to um, you know, ask for some greater clarity. Um, uh, Sharon asked earlier where the reference photo is. So if you haven't seen it, it's in the description underneath the video. Um, you're going to find a link to that. You're also going to find a link to the one for Friday, the pairs that I'll be drawing. Uh, so if you want to get a head start on that, you can certainly do that. Uh, Rania had a question about making the creases look subtle. And so the trick there is to keep your marks light and loose and think about the, the marks kind of skipping across the page. Um, so I'm holding the pencil at its side, on its side here, and just kind of lightly tapping on the page and letting my mind fill in the gaps between them. If I take this like I'm writing, if I hold my pencil in a tripod grip and I bear down and create a thin line, that's going to pop off the stage and it's going to read like a line, not an edge. Um, and so what I'm doing is just thinking about the overall form and letting those marks kind of skip across the page and that's going to feel more naturalistic. And then as I build up the values, now I have three values. I have the dark part in the crease, I've got a middle tone, and I've got a highlight here. And that's gonna to help to create a sense of form. If I need to create more form, if I really, really wanna round out and accentuate these creases, I can bring a highlight in on top of that. So now I have a highlight on top of that crease, moves into a middle ground, a middle value, and into the shadow there. Come back in uh, with my eraser and pull out a highlight on the one below it. And that's really going to heighten those creases. And so something you want to be aware of as you're uh, working with a particular subject is how visible are those creases. But you can start to think of, of each of those as individual shapes that have distinct light, dark, um, and middle values. I didn't build up a whole lot of texture in here, but you know, there are these kind of round parts that I can start to lift out with my eraser. So that was a good question. I'm sorry I missed that earlier. So um, hopefully you caught that. Um, <laughs> Mark, staring at you. That's good. That's exactly what we want. Um, I've seen some questions perhaps in a language that I do not um, understand. So make it look angrier. I should have done that. All right, any questions about the, the, about the highlights? Okay, looks like we've got everything. Uh, so thank you all for joining. It's been my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun getting to meet you all and to work on this. I hope uh, you are enjoying drawing your own eye. And I will see you all on Friday, same time.